<laughs> All right, so tell us what's going on with like, Jason and Neville's relationship right now. It seems like they didn't like each other for so much and for so long, but now they're really aligned and like the past is like forgotten. It's really forgotten. I don't think you, you really don't forget the past. It's just that uh, we're bonded right now with uh, a common goal, and that's to find, uh, to rescue mom. Um, I, I think that, you know, we're obviously not a family that really talks about it and deals with uh, those issues, even though I think it's something that Jason would really love to move on from. Um, but uh, until there's a resolution there, it's, it's just... Um, it just kind of it, it's it sticks, which makes it interesting at the same time because they can explode with each other at any at any minute, you know. Um, but uh, you know, both characters, it's it's you know, I think Jason's kind of getting to his breaking point a bit, and um, you know, and Neville is is uh, his little psychotic. So, <laughs> so what is? Jason's breaking point. What's going to push him over the edge? I think, um, I think at this point, I think it's more about him now. It's more about, you know, before season one, it was really about Charlie. It was about, uh, you know, his, his crush on the girl and what's right, what's wrong. But I think that when you're being used in war, so to speak, um, the lines can be blurred a little bit, and then the only thing that you have left to look back at is yourself and saying, "Wait a minute, am I? What am I doing? How am I being used? How am I taking part? Uh, what's my part in all this?" And, um, so I think that I know Jason does, doesn't want to lose himself, and so I think that that'll be his, his point. Just his line that he draws. Does Jason have any further ramifications from the mind manipulation that he went under? Is he cured from that? Um, I don't know. Uh, no, he, he. You know what? It's it's still there. It's there. Um, it definitely uh, plays its part. Um, it's a part of him now, and which makes it interesting as well. You know, it's it's a very. I try to approach it as kind of like a post-traumatic stress, you know, element to him a bit, you know, it's something that, um, you know, he's been messed with, you know, and not by just dad, but also by something bigger, and, um, and that's scary, so it's, it's interesting to play, but it definitely, it's, it's there, it's definitely there. Do you feel like the, the mind control for Neville is more of the controlling factor for him in terms of possibly actually losing himself? Is he fighting Neville as much as he's fighting this other part of him? Um, you know, I, I would say no to that. My answer would be no. I, I think that I think that with with Neville, there is an acceptance there now. There's, um, I mean, he knows who his dad is. I mean, he's pointed a gun to his head, threatened to kill him, he's punched him. Um, and I don't think there are any surprises there. I, I think that being manipulated by the government, so to speak, and um, I mean, he, he was fighting for the militia. You know, he was fighting for them. He was one of their soldiers. And then so for them to just completely, um, you know, abuse his mind and take that from him, um, you know, I, I, that's the line. Mm. You know, and then it's and then it's about himself and, and what is he doing. And I think that he'll definitely come to a point where he's gonna, you know, need help. <laughs>